1969, we had the most ornate train station in the South, if not in America, and we tore it down, and people have lamented it ever since. Well, we didn't really even know we had this 1914 vaudeville theater here in the heart of downtown Birmingham. The theater itself was bricked off, and it was, it was like King Tut's tomb. We didn't even know we had it. I think it's a really remarkable space uh, that time has forgotten. And I think Birmingham has had a lot of significant architectural losses. The interior of this place is majestic and lovely, but from the outside, it just sort of looks like a boring, like a nondescript dump, really. Uh, but then when you walk in, it's really quite remarkable. The Lyric Theatre itself, it was magnificent. All the gold leaf and all the high ceilings and the chandeliers and the carpets and the tile and the marble. It was spectacular. Uh, the Lyric was one of the finest theaters in the United States and the finest theater in Birmingham. It was it was the first iron and concrete and steel and concrete constructed building in the state of Alabama. Uh, the Lyric was built in 1913 and opened in January of 1914 as a vaudeville theater. Vaudeville was short acts, comedy, diving horses, monkeys on bicycles, all kinds of interesting acts, one right after the other. In fact, vaudeville, you think of it as being an old-time entertainment medium, but it's not. Even during the 60s when there was the Ed Sullivan Show, it was a variety show and that was vaudeville, but it was on television. And from 1927 until about 1958, the Lyric Theater had vaudeville acts less and less and movies more and more. Saturday was a big day for a kid. Uh, we wanted to go downtown because there were good movies downtown. And one of the theaters downtown was the Lyric Theater. And they always, on Saturdays, they played cowboys and Indians and gangsters and uh, that type of movie. And they always had a serial. And the serial would run for several weeks, maybe 10 weeks. And uh, it would come on and it was exciting. And it would cut off just at the time that maybe somebody was going to get thrown over the cliff or something like that. And they would always say, come back next week and find out what happened. Mm -hmm. We'd just kind of look at each other. I'll be back next week to watch. One of the most significant threads of history uh, at the Lyric is uh, the theater's connection with the Independent Presbyterian Church. Independent Presbyterian was founded in 1950 when Dr. Henry Edmonds, who was the minister at South Island Presbyterian, got into a doctrinal dispute with some of the uh, members of that congregation. Uh, he left the church. Uh, a good many members of the church left with him to form a new church. And from the get-go, Dr. Edmonds uh, had a strong mission for social justice. To him, it was a very significant part of his ministry that on Sunday mornings, he was preaching to the mo one of the most wealthy congregations in the city. And on Sunday afternoon, or Sunday nights, he was uh, preaching to actors and prostitutes and whoever happened to wander in. He packed every level of the lyric from the top balcony down to the, to the, the center. And I believe that they used the lyrics uh, crowd and the people who live downtown as a magnet to, to draw in people who ordinarily may not feel like they belonged in church. And, and Henry Edmonds knew that, and those are the people he wanted to reach. Those are the people he wanted to help. Our immediate racial problem, for example, is the Negro. I confess my sins and the sins of my people against the Negro, not only as a Southerner, but as a member of the human race. The exploitation of minority racial groups is a human sin. I dare you to do something about it. Our adventure will not be physical, but intellectual and spiritual. Henry Edmonds also preached to black and white congregations at the Lyric, and that may have been the first integrated church services in Birmingham, I don't, I don't know. All the theaters on 2nd and 3rd were white theaters. All the theaters on 4th were black theaters. But the Lyric was unusual because it, it was the only theater in downtown Birmingham where black and white audiences 
saw the same show at the same time for the same price. It's a place where they um, had, uh, in a time when they were not treated as equals, a much more equal access to the theater. They uh, were not forced to stand in an alleyway to enter the building as they were at the Alabama Theater, but instead they had access to the Lyric Theater off of 18th Street, a public street. When you are in this place, you are having an encounter with the physical realities of, of what segregation was, and I, I think that's extremely powerful. There are people we have learned through this process that are very emotionally uh, moved by this building, especially when they come back into the building not having been there since maybe um, the, the, the late 50s or the early 60s. I looked at the Lyric Theater the other day as an adult, and it was a gorgeous, gorgeous theater. But it, when we were kids, we didn't appreciate the grandeur of that theater. You can't build a theater like this today. We don't have the artisans av available to build it. This theater back here is, is, is built largely of plaster that's held together with horsehair, if you can believe that. The acoustic resonance on plaster is so much better than uh, gypsum board, uh, which is sheetrock. The sound quality uh, is, is incredible. The theater was, was built to be uh, highly acoustic and to, uh, to, to generate a uh, tremendous sound quality without the benefit of microphones and uh, amplification. Uh, we had a concert here in September of 2012. The Chad Fisher group played and several people asked us whether there were speakers in the walls. And several people asked like how, how we had managed to keep the sound system so great, you know, when the rest of the building was obviously appeared to be falling apart and we said, no, it just sounds that good in here. What I think is critical is that we save these landmarks because places like the Lyric Theater are what give a city its very soul. What, what makes part of this urgent is the longer we wait, the bigger the price tag gets, the more we have rain and air and pigeons and stray cats and whatever, the project overall will get more expensive. There's another reason. Uh, 2014 is the 100th anniversary of the Lyric, and we think that's the perfect time to get people excited about the Lyric and to reopen it. We're not going to let them bulldoze down the Lyric, and we're not going to make another parking lot out of this. We're going to save this for the city so future generations can enjoy it. This is a gift to us from a, from a previous generation, and it's, I think it's, up, it's our duty to save it. And it's rewarding to know that they are going to restore the Lyric Theatre. In order to promote the different movies that they had, they would have, if it was a gangster movie, they might have an old car out front, it was always black, had holes in it, bullet holes. So for little kids to walk up to this car and see the gangster's car with all these bullet holes and make you want to go in and see the movie, and that was the idea, to get people to come inside.